So I'm representing this group of mathematicians and engineers who have been working for the last year or so on this project which is about creating resources for um, formative assessment, assessment for learning for mathematics um, for first years. So the partner institutions are Maynooth, DCU, Athlone IT and Dundalk IT and these are the people involved. Um, as well as the academic staff, we have um, Christine, who's our programmer and has done a huge amount of work, and she'll show you what she's done in a minute, and Katrina, who's a research um, student in maths education. So uh, what's the project about? Well, our aim has been to try and develop um, ways of improving or helping students improve their own understanding of mathematics. And we decided to go about this in um, two streams, really. We wanted to look at creating an audience response system for in-class use that would be more suitable for mathematics than the kind of clickers that are out there already. And we also wanted to use technology um, to help develop interactive tasks and other resources uh, for students. So we're thinking about formative assessment. The definition of formative assessment we're using is from Black and William. And I'll just read it out there. It says that um, they say formative assessment encompasses all those activities undertaken by teachers and or by the students which provide information to be used as feedback to modify the teaching and learning activities in which they're engaged. And that's what we're really interested in. It's about information. It's about giving information to students, giving information to staff, and uh, how you use that information to um, change the way you teach or change the way you learn or decide where you have gaps. So um, Black and William have done a lot of work on this and uh, we found their strategies for formative assessment quite useful. So they give these five strategies for things that you might think about if you're trying to do formative assessment. So they say that um, these things like engineering effective classroom discussion, questions and learning tasks that elicit evidence of learning, providing feedback that moves learners forward, clarifying and sharing learning intentions and criteria for success, and activating students as owners of their own learning and as instructional resources for one another. And we've tried to look at these criteria and strategies and incorporate them into what we do. So our um, as audience response system, we feel really fits with one quite well, engineering effective classroom discussion, and then providing feedback to those people in the class that hopefully will move the learners forward. Other things like the um, interactive tasks that we've developed using things like GeoGebra and MATLAB, we feel they're quite naturally fit into two, giving good questions that will um, elicit evidence, and then providing the feedback is crucial, and um, hopefully that will help the teachers and learners to move forward. Things like our screencast project where we have students working on a difficult problem, using technology to solve it, and then making a screencast to explain this to their peers. We see this fits in quite well with five, letting students be owners of their own learning and helping each other. We also felt that, you know, we could do all of these things without using technology, and uh, we wanted to see how technology would really help us. Um, to add something extra. And we felt what we wanted to do, and I think we said this a while ago, is we wanted to give the students the opportunity to act like mathematicians would. So how do mathematicians use technology? And there's this, Boravine has um, laid out some of the ways that mathematicians use this just to play around with things, to get an intuition, to try things out. Instead of trying to do loads of calculations, to try things out, do things really fast, see if things work or don't work, make conjectures, draw things, graph things. And this is the way we wanted to use the technology to let students do this so that they could build their own intuition and understanding. That's what we hope. So what have we done so far? Um, well, last summer, in last spring, we conducted a survey of staff and students to find out what was there already, what things were really useful, what did people really want? And we picked out some areas from that and the, and the analysis of that data, Katrina has done a really good job with that and we have presented that um, at different fora. We employed Christine as our programmer and Katrina as a research student. We have created a lot of the resources already that's still ongoing. We've trialed quite a lot of them, especially in the last semester and the trials are going on this semester too. Uh, we've created a resource page on the National Forum's own website where we hope we'll 
be able to share with the community. Um, we haven't put a lot on that yet because we really want to refine our resources before, before we put them out there. And that's what we're doing at the moment. So the kinds of things we've done, um, these are some of the interactive tasks and resources that we've been working on. We showed you some of these at the, at the meeting last summer. Um, we're not going to go through those now because we wanted to focus really on the audience response system to show you what that's like, because last summer we didn't have any of that. Um, this, just quickly, is an example of a conjecturing task that uh, you might give to first year students. Instead of telling students that in order to find the graph of an inverse function reflect in the line y equals x, you could let them figure that out for themselves by just letting them input different functions, observe the graphs, and seeing if they could find the connection. So this is a, a simple conjecturing task, and it's the way we hope that um, our resources are helping students. So the um, apps, the UniDoodle apps, these are, Christine's going to show you these now, but they're to be used in class to gather responses from students. Students can input not just A, B, C answers, but graphs or little calculations or whatever. And then the lecturer can either choose to put them up on the screen and talk about whichever ones are appropriate, or can show all of the answers and see um, the kind of distribution in the class. So I'll hand over to Christine, I think. Um, these, unfortunately, the system here doesn't allow her to, to show you the stuff directly on screen, but she'll do her best. Um, hi, I'm Christine. I am doing the technical side of this, like Anne said, the UniDoodle apps. Um, just a bit of background for anyone who doesn't know what an audience response system is. If you've ever seen Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you've witnessed one in action. It's um, the ask the audience question. So teachers have been using these for years and years, and the, the pros and cons of them are like well established. They've been studied. Um, and basically, it's meant for teachers to direct their learning based on whether or not students have demonstrated an understanding of what they've just been taught. So clickers are great, but for engineering and maths, they're quite limited um, in that it doesn't allow for free form input. You can't test students on their knowledge of graphing or the way things should turn out. And then also clickers require students to purchase a device or rent it at the start of the year. So we wanted them to be able to use their own phones, which no student ever forgets, ever. Um, so I want to demonstrate this. Unfortunately, I can't show everyone, but these are screenshots of how it would look. There are two components. There's the lecturer app, which is UniDoodle Teach, and the student app, which is UniDoodle. The student app is available on the Play Store and the iOS Store. It's in use in classrooms now. And I'm mostly going to talk about the, the lecture app, so I'm going to show you. I might have been a math lecturer and I might have taught people, I'll try to read, I might have taught people that a um, graph of y is equal to x squared looks like this, and I might ask people to draw the graph of y is equal to minus x squared. Um, so a kind of common pitfall here is, depending on parentheses, uh, students might get this incredibly wrong or they might get it right. And the idea is that a lecturer can get lots of responses. Uh, I think the white is can you too? It is. Oh yeah. So this is a, a student app, they can draw on top, they can submit their answer and put anything they want. Um, so a correct answer would be that an inverse step back. And then the lecture app can see you know, how many responses have come back. They can close the question and then they get kind of this spread of responses. And now ideally they'd be sharing this uh, on a projector so that students get the benefit of seeing what their peers have submitted. And it's all anonymous, so they're not worried about getting it wrong or any repercussions. So what they will see, and I know it's not very clear, is the middle, the middle screen up there mm -hmm. that just shows you the spread of responses. And then that allows lecturers to go, look, 
lots of people make this common mistake, you know, you hear surgeons getting it wrong, or if everyone's getting it right, they can use it like a clicker system and just move on. Um, we've also built in multiple choice options, which is multiple even, so we've replaced them with the clicker system faster. Um, that's basically it. If anyone wants to see it, you can ask me and I'll show you. But uh, after, um, it's been used uh, two to three times a week. We're gathering the data a little bit at the minute, so we haven't evaluated it yet, but we're just getting all the data. That's where we work. Thanks, Christy. So this is being used in um, engineering modules in Maynooth and also in DCU at the moment, and it's being trialled um, and evaluated this semester. Um, so the impact of our whole um, project, um, as we said, these kind of resources will be made available to the community in Ireland, and we want to upload things to our resource page, but also to make the audience response system available. And uh, we have been working in our own institutions, in the four institutions, we've given uh, workshops to people from different areas, like I know in Maynooth that the economics department, the chemistry department, the physics department are all interested in working with Christine and developing the app for their, uh, using the apps in their um, subjects. So it's not just mathematics, but it's lots of other areas to see the benefit of it. Um, we've also plans to disseminate, especially this summer, in um, conferences around, around Europe, actually. So we have um, two conferences in Ireland that we're going to go to. The second one there, I think, is really important because it's the people who are involved on the ground with teaching mathematics in universities. And um, we want to show them what we've done and hope that they'll give us some advice and maybe use our resources as well. Um, these are the conferences that we've been accepted to this summer. And these are international ones. And um, I want to pick out the last one because this is the International Congress of Maths Education. It happens every four years. And um, we were submitted a paper. And when we got the reviews, they asked us to submit a much longer paper and give a longer talk. And they had some really nice comments. So I just thought I'd share those with you. Um, evaluation, I guess, I don't have a huge amount of time to talk about this. But let me just say that we're trying to evaluate everything in two different ways, qualitatively and quantitatively. So we have surveys and focus groups with students in all of the things that we're doing. And also we want to match that with looking at usage rates and the effect on grades. Um, so far, the results, we had one semester last year, last, um, just in, finished in December where we had been trialing things like the online lessons and the interactive tasks. And we found that students were positive about these things in general. There were some problems, um, and I think this feedback is really useful to us. A lot of the open-ended tasks, the students often didn't see what they really needed to do or where they needed to go, and so we're refining those at the moment. Um, with the Khan Academy um, sort of um, sections of courses, we found that the students who used these did improve their grades on pre and post tests. Um, but again, that the usage was really linked to whether it was built into CA or not. And we're working with ways of thinking about how to change that this semester. Um, a lot of the analysis of the data is still ongoing because we just finished in December with that amount of, uh, of those pilots. So we need to start working more on the data. Where we are in general, um, while our audience response, response system is ready, the um, apps are all ready except for the iOS version of the lecture app, which is nearly ready and will be ready at the end of March. And they're being trialed, as we said, in the two institutions. Um, the interactive tasks and resources, we have created lots of resources. We want to refine those and create new ones based on the results of our trials. And we need to continue with the data analysis from those. And dissemination, we have created a resource page. Um, we want to use that to share resources, and we want to continue to talk to people in other institutions and to publish our findings. So that's it. Thanks.